Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we are going to do our June floral word art piece focusing on everyone's favourite, the peony. So grab your paints and let's get started. So for today's uh, floral word art we're going to be taking inspiration from my very own new botanical painting because it is, uh, we're, well, we're well into peony season and in my book I have a lovely uh, peony flower painting but what I do with every flower is I do a miniature equivalent and because peonies um, we want to learn them sort of face on and from the side we've got two versions here because when you paint something smaller you can really simplify down the detail and still capture something really lovely so we're going to do our June word art and we're going to basically uh, write out the lettering of June and then we are going to basically dress it with peonies so I've got a set square and a HB pencil and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw two horizontal lines to set my uh, sort of structure, set my outer limits for the lettering and then I'm just going to draw single letters that we're going to fill out and paint. So what we've got here is two horizontal lines, the distance between those two lines is two inches and then to do our lettering, uh, June is J-U-N-E. I worked out where the centre was and worked out how much space I had for my letters and for me that worked out at an inch and a half and then separated by just a little quarter inch space there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the letters. So um, we're just doing a, a, a single line to form a letter. So there's our N, N. Um, let's get an E, so we'll have that there, and then the slightly trickier ones, but don't worry because this is essentially all going to be covered over with foliage, but we want to create our U shape by getting a curve. And then for the J, and people do diff different ways of doing different Js, I think I am going to sort of have my J coming down from the middle, so I'm going to have a, a ruler. Or actually, maybe I'll have it coming down here. It's funny, until you're sort of in the moment, you're sort of not quite sure how you're going to do it, but I think... Yeah. So I'll have the J sort of to there. Okay, lovely. Now, if you were at home painting this, what I would now recommend is that you would lightly rub out the pencil. Um, but as we're filming, I'm gonna keep it like that. And now we'll move on to some painting. Now this piece is a fairly sort of small scale flower painting piece. However, I do keep a larger brush. I've got a size four here for mixing colors. So I've got permanent rose just here, which is a fantastic pink for peonies, but I do love to mix a bit of yellow ochre in with my permanent rose to create just a slightly blushy colour. I'm getting my colours just ready in the empty wells of the palette because you want to have your colours good to go and not waste lots of time mixing them up and waking them up in the palette. A bit of cadmium orange is always really sensible to have and cadmium yellow as well. So what we're going to do first is we're going to place in peonies because it's much easier to draw in your focal flowers first. It's a, it's a rule of thumb really with my painting whenever I'm painting arrangements place in your large flowers first, then your smaller ones and smaller ones, and then you can put foliage in around the edge. And the idea is we're going to paint as if we've got like a, I know peonies don't grow on a vine, but that's the kind of feel we're going to go for. So I'm gonna begin with, I've got a three tenths brush here. So the two tenths from the set that I sell would be perfect. Um, I've just got three tenths because that's just what I've picked up. But what we're going to do is I'm going to begin up here and I'm going to paint an open-faced miniature peony. Now the way I like to do it is I paint a sort of miniature 
swirl with just a little bit of unpainted space but it doesn't have to be perfect in fact the more imperfect it is the better okay and then I'm going to take a slightly larger brush and I'm going to make sure it's nice and wet maybe with a fraction of that other color on it and I am just going to begin to just bleed out the color from that spiral in the middle and create a lovely sort of frill of petals. Now you see you have to work quite fast with this because there's not a lot of color in there in that spiral. There we go. So I'm just sort of frilling the petals out there and what we're doing is we're leaving a tiny bit of the unpainted space in the middle untouched and then what I'm going to do is take a little bit more permanent rose just dab that there and then a little bit of the cadmium orange as well and then all of a sudden we've got ourselves a miniature simplified peony so let's do that again shall we so we start with some quite strong um, permanent rose with a nice small brush doing a nice spiral and the spiral is tight sometimes so tight that it might touch each other but that's fine and I start to sort of wobble it a little bit out to the sides and then using a wet brush sort of doing almost like a U shape in there and then frilling out the edges U shape in and frilling out the edges. See if you work a little bit faster, it's even more successful. There we go. And then just taking a little bit of the pink whilst it's wet. And you'll see how these dashes really do bleed out and blend out and become really gorgeous. Okay, so we're gonna just fill up a few more peonies like that on the word art. We've got our open-faced peonies painted in, and now we're going to place in a few sort of uh, side-on, uh, sort of opening up ones as we go. So the way I'm gonna do that is I've got a um, three-tenths brush again, and I'm going to be creating little cups by just doing two mirrored C curves in the fairly dilute permanent rose and I've cleaned my brush off and now I'm just using the wetness of that brush just to create a few more sort of curving petals just to get a few little bits up there and then a bit more concentrated permanent rose at the bottom now you could leave it like that um, and you could also create your much smaller little sort of almost like the tight uh, budded balls of peonies by just sort of creating even smaller ball shapes there. Just beginning with those C curves and a little bit of unpainted space that you can just blend a tiny bit and then that little bit of more concentrated permanent rose is a great way there. But of course we get our nice open flowers from the side as well. So let's have a go at one of those. Um, we're just always looking for places to put them so it's gonna still be able to be sort of easily readable that it's, it is June, but let's go in here, shall we? So I'm gonna begin with a similar sort of cup shape, but it's gonna be more open, so So my C curves aren't quite reaching each other at the top, they're more open like that. And I'm using the tip of the brush and then squashing it down into the open brush there. And I'm going to take a bit of a stronger permanent rose. And if it doesn't sort of bleed in entirely, that's fine. Just clean your brush off and get a little bit of water on and you'll get a little bit of a smoothing out blend there. And what we can do now is firstly, we can add a few petals that are just sort of 
unfurl just a bit further. So they're all coming from that central point there. But also you can pop in a few just sort of at the back. And what we'll do once everything's dried and finished off, we'll pop in a few little cadmium yellow uh, stamen in the middle there. So let me do that one more time for you. Let's do one on the end here. So we're going to have, just turn my page a bit. So our C curves are going to be opening up. They're not going to be joining up in the middle, are they? They're more open make more of a broad cup shape. A little bit of the strong pink down at the base there. Clean that brush off. A few petals that have just unfurled. It doesn't all have to be even as well. It can be a little bit wonky if you want. And then maybe just a few at the back there just give us a sense of this rounded flower. So I'm going to just place in a few more flowers and then we can put it all together with some gorgeous green peony foliage. We've just let that dry a little bit and in the meantime I've been mixing up some greens. So I've got sap green here um, and I want to get just a slightly bluey green so I've got some French ultramarine mixed in there too and this just means I've got these options as well as my regular greens because there's always more than one green in nature wherever you're looking so don't limit yourself to a single color that's my most that's my top tip basically when it comes to botanicals you just want to keep those greens nice and varied so I've got green gold just being woken up there as well and of course you don't always have to just use a ready mixed green paint um, if you have a look at my really useful mixing chart uh, tutorial in my watercolour painting for beginners playlist you will find there are many ways to create the colour green without actually having green paint. Anyway so I've got one of my smaller brushes here again and what we're going to do to begin with is I'm going to just sort of start painting in leaves. Um, now a peony leaves they're quite sort of long as well as being sort of quite sort of strong, thick, glossy things. So I think the best way to do them is to use the fine tip of your brush to create a nice tapered line and then do a second one mirrored, just giving you that little bit of green uh, unpainted space down the middle and uh, we can just start to build this up. So we want to make sure that we have an, an obvious sort of lettering line. So we will be doing this with a bit of artistic license as well. Now the best way to do nice sort of controlled straight lines is with a rigger brush, which is the long slender bristles. But the only thing is, is it's not going to be that often that we have long sort of long lengths uh, of of line but at the same time I think it's going to be really useful for just sort of starting us off each time and so then I can link up my little flowers and then place in a leaf or two so what I like to do Is when I've painted in those leaves is maybe just give them a little dot of the dark green every now and then so I'm just going to be sort of alternating between my rigger brush and there we go sort of weaving in stems in a way so we get a little bit of a, a 
sort of organic curve as well as having the straighter actual lettering lines. And then adding leaves where I see fit. On these curved ones, it's nice to add in a few extra tendrils that sort of sweep off into the side, um, just to give you even more interest. So not all of your leaves have to be the sort of the two mirrored C curves with a bit of unpainted space in the middle. They can just be singular strokes as well. So now we're into the phase of doing nice little finishing touches. Well, one of the things we do need to do is create just some little green sepals around the buds. You can see I've done it in a few places here. So obviously you need to make sure that your buds are nice and dry before we do this. So I've just got sap green, my four tenths brush, I'm using the tip of the brush, but angling the brush quite low to the page and just doing some really sort of deep C curves. Just sort of two or three on each one. And then we can just add a few little finishing touches to our flowers. So I'm just changing my water back to my pinky yellow watercolours. So I want to get a bit more of the pink mixed up and make sure my yellow and orange are nicely woken up again. Okay, so a few things we can do. Uh, right, get a small brush, but not too small. On some of our open faced flowers, what we can do is actually create a few extra layers of petals. So what I'm gonna do with a bit of pink on my brush, I'm just going to create a, a very sort of uh, uneven little sort of scribble around the edge. Clean my brush off and then I'm going to draw the colour down in to the middle, which just blends and softens that a little bit. So let's do that again, a bit of pink. And we're basically creating the inner, sort of one of the many inner layers of petals. Now that one there almost looks like it's got it already, so I'm not going to worry about that one. So it's very important that once you've done that, you clean your brush off and then you just blend the colour into the middle a little bit. Um, and then I'll leave that one as well because that's got quite an interesting swirl going on. You don't want things to be too uniform. Uh, and now, a little bit of yellow mixed with orange. The orange is very strong, so just get quite a lot of yellow in there. Time to place in some of these yellow sepals into those open flowers. So just dotting sort of in where you sort of feel it's visible. And then we'll just add in a few in the center of the open face flowers, but with that I'm going to, just going to use solid cadmium yellow because that is the one colour that we haven't yet used on those, those open face flowers yet because there is a little bit of orange lurking in there. Um, you want to make sure they're dry before you do this. There we go. So we'll just wait for everything to dry fill in those last little yellow dots and rub out the pencil. And there we go, pencil all rubbed out. And um, there we go. And that's looking really rather lovely for June. 
Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. And I want to say a massive thank you to our patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed that one, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with it. And if you're sharing your work on social media, then tag us at De Winton Paper Co on Instagram. And if you never want to miss another video, then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell, and we'll see you again next time. Bye.